Hey guys, it's Sam here from Core Electronics and today I wanted to share my recent project with you. It is an IOT plant monitor. So plants are cool and fun to have around the house, but if you're like me, you always forget to water them and then they die. It's not good. So I built a little device using a particle photon, which is able to monitor the soil moisture content of the plant uh, and then email you when it needs watering or do nothing if it's all good. So I'll plug it in now and we'll take a look at how it goes. So I've got these three probes here that we dip into our plant. So this one, put them in there. Grab this one, put him in there. This one, put that guy there. Do these screws up. And what's going to happen is, in a moment, the uh, the particle is going to power back on, and when it wakes up, it's going to check the soil values of all of my plants. And if they need watering, then it is going to, to let me know with one of these LEDs, and then it's also going to send me an email reminding me that I need to water the plants, which I think is pretty cool. So, you can see that nothing is happening on the photon. And what it does is it will wake up, uh, check the sensors, and if they're all good, if there's plenty of uh, water in the soil, then it will just go back to sleep. But if one of them is dry, then it will light up the corresponding LED and as I said, shoot you an email. So I'll unplug this sensor and this is uh, you know, stimulating a plant that is very, very dry, it needs a lot of water because these guys have just been watered. And you can see now it's reset and it does that every 10 seconds. This LED is going to stay on for 10 seconds. Uh, so you get that visual notification, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then it's going to shoot through an email. So what's the time? 10.28. Let's delete that old one there. All right. Let me go back to the inbox and I'll delete those. So we've got a fresh slate. All right, I'll put this one back in and I'll unplug this one so that when it resets, uh, and there's an LED inside of, uh, or on the photon board inside of the case, which you can see if it's a little darker. All right, so it's gone through its reset. Uh, so it'll go to sleep for 10 seconds to help conserve battery life. When it starts up, it should detect that plant number three is dry. There we go. And you'll see that email come through in a moment. It's using IFTTT or IFT uh, as the triggering through the particle channel, which is really, really neat. And we should get that email come through in just a second. And I also use some pull-up resistors so that it detects if a cable is unplugged. So if you only want to use it with two plants or one plant, uh, you can do that. And it's not gonna light up and send you that email every time just because uh, the probe is unplugged, which yeah, it works pretty well. So that email will come through in a second, but I'm gonna take the lid off this guy and we'll take a look at how I built it so you can follow along and build your own. Unfortunately, the joys of email servers is that they can be a little bit slow. So there we go, it's come through. Plant two needs watering. That was the previous notification, of course. It's designed for when you're out of the home so you won't be on your email constantly watching it. Uh, it gives you a timestamp. And if we open up the email, it says, you know, it turns out plant two needs, uh, could do with drink. Give it a water and it's just got some more data there from the recipe. You can see here is the recipe on uh, IFT. Triggering with the particle channel, uh, plant one, if it equals one, that's just a function return result. It's monitoring the results of these functions that I created. So I'll move these plants to the side and we'll take a look at what's going on under the lid. Alrighty. So you can see the photons connecting to the cloud there after a power cycle. And I've changed the sleep timer to 10 seconds, so it's a bit more fun to watch in a video. Uh, but normally you could set this to, uh, because the soil moisture content in a plant is a very slow uh, changing uh, event, you would set this to only monitor every hour, six hours even, so that it's, you know, you're gonna get the most battery life out of it. So you can see then none of the probes are connected, so it powered on, connected to the cloud, went straight back to sleep because there's nothing to do. So it only monitors or alerts you when they're dry and go to sleep for 10 seconds there. So I'm just using some standoffs here. All right, and I've got a 2400 milliamp hour LiPo battery. I designed this case 
for the DF Robot single-sided proto board. Uh, fits perfectly there, you just put some standoffs into the holes, I use some hot glue to make sure it's extra durable for make fairs and the like. And it just screws on there, some more standoffs to put the lid on. My wife painted this guy and I think it looks pretty cool. Let's see if I can get a nice shot there. Yeah, she done good. Looks pretty awesome. And this is the, the guts of it. I've taken the screws off. Uh, we've got a particle photon there. Uh, that's the brains, that's a microcontroller, Wi-Fi connected microcontroller. I've got an Adafruit power boost board here, which is such a great product. It just works so well and so simply. Uh, it filters the, or regulates, I should say, the battery voltage from the LiPo to a clean five volts to power the photon. Uh, and then the power boost also handles uh, low battery events and also charging via the second micro USB port here. And then I've just got a little, I guess, add on board with the LEDs, current limiting resistors and my JST sockets so that it's really easy to connect those cables in. I modified the original DF robot cables which had, for these soil moisture sensors, which had uh, female headers on them to be JST connectors, but I used two different pin pitches just to make it very clear which one, you know, they can only go in one way into one cable, so you can't connect them up backwards. And so if we unplug that, you can see the case, and I just used, yeah, some single-sided proto board. It's pretty simple wiring. I like using that whole proto board as, as a mounting plate for the project. And other than that, you could use a smaller battery or a, a bigger battery if you want. There's space there for perhaps a uh, 4,400 milliamp hour, but 2,400 milliamp hour should last for, I think I worked it out at a couple of years uh, without needing a recharge based on a six hour duty cycle for that. And it works, it works really, really well. I'm pretty happy with it. And there's nothing fancy going on with the, the code. Um, you've just got some particle cloud functions. So I've got a separate function each uh, event, so plant one, plant two, plant three, and then also low battery. What that does is the power boost is going to, has a, a low battery trigger pin, which connects up to one of the interrupt pins or just a digital pin, but it can be interrupt enabled on the, uh, the photon. And when it receives that, it checks that every time it powers through, and if it detects low battery, it shuts down, and it doesn't come out of deep sleep until that pin is lifted again, which only happens on the power boost when the battery uh, LiPo voltage goes above the uh, lower threshold uh, by charging it, which is super cool. So it's um, not a lot of maintenance involved in this at all. And I'm just using some headers for the, the photon. So you're not soldering directly to, you know, to your Wi-Fi chip, you can repurpose it for uh, other projects. And apart from that, it's just, um, it's a fairly basic circuit and a fairly simple code. There's what, 123 lines of code, which could probably be squished down again because I'm using separate functions for everything just to make it easy to see what's going on and to follow. If you wanna build your own, you can see some more of these emails coming through as we had it left on, plant three, plant two, they're all thirsty. Just go ahead and clear those. And this is the uh, IFT recipe. So as I was talking about before, if when plant one, which is the function name, the cloud function that we've got just here, it monitors that function when it's called, it monitors the return result. Uh, don't mind the name, I was using this for a separate project, NeoPixel tester, it should be called IOP plant monitor. And it tests that, and if it is equal to one, saying the plant is dry and action needs to be taken, then it will send an email to my chosen email address with the following message. And that's all there is to it. It's really, really easy to create, uh, I guess, internet or IOT based projects that do everything from email you, you know, plant monitoring. Uh, we created the IOT house and the IOT mailbox, which operate on similar principles, uh, especially with the particle gear, because it is so user friendly and so easy to create IOT projects and applications with it. So that is my plant monitoring project. If you like it, check it out on our site if you're viewing it somewhere else. And also if you've built one yourself, we'd love to see some pictures, see what you did. I've put the CAD, uh, the STLs for this enclosure that I printed out on the project page, the schematic, the wiring diagram, uh, the code, it's all there, so check it out. And we'd love to see what you guys are doing with this project. So I'll see you next time guys and be sure to check out some of our other projects in the link below.